Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Carla Silverman. I, I think I, I know some of you. Um, I have my colleague Julie Barnes with me here, and we have a, a full day training um, for you, uh, focused on managing and supervising care coordination staff. Um, I, I want to actually, it's kind of a small group, and we really want to understand what you do and, and who you work with. Um, so I think I'm going to have people introduce themselves, but let me give you a little background first about myself. How many of you have come to the care, uh, the core care coordinator trainings? How many of you know me or have, or have been in a class with me? Like half, half of you, yes? How many have not? I'm a new person? Okay, all right. So we did have a core series of trainings in the earlier part of the year. Um, and uh, some of the concepts we'll talk about today build on that. Um, just to kind of clue you into our style, um, these are very interactive trainings. There is a screen here, but we're not going to spend a lot of time lecturing you. Um, there'll be small parts of, of lecture and a lot of activities and exercises. And we really encourage you to ask questions and um, you know, speak up, right? If we're gonna, we're gonna get to know each other well, and we think that we can deliver the best uh, uh, help for you and support for you if, if we're all um, talking to each other. So, for those of you who don't know us, Primary Care Development Corporation is a nonprofit organization based in New York City. Although we work nationally, our mission is to improve primary care in low-income areas and to support primary care in its various forms. Um, my background is as a registered nurse and a certified nurse midwife. I worked for almost 10 years in the South Bronx and Washington Heights in New York City as a midwife, providing prenatal care, primary care, family planning services. Um, I was clinical director of a large women's health organization uh, in Westchester and Long Island for a bunch of years. And I've been in PCDC for over five years and I run all the care coordination and care management training activities there. Um, we gotta have Julie introduce herself, and then we can go around the room. Sure. Good morning. Um, I'm still waking up as evidenced by the thermos. You'll <laughs> <laughs> get me more late. Um, so my name is Julie Barnes. I am a mental health counselor, um, clinical supervisor, and trainer. So my my main areas of expertise are HIV and mental health, but I've done a bunch of work with chronic disease. Um, and have been a program manager and a supervisor of community health workers um, and peer uh, navigators for a really long, long time. Um, so I'm really excited to be here with Carla. She is both, um, has great experience and is a really great trainer and we're hoping it will be um, just, you know, practical, lively, interactive um, day. Because I can listen to lecture for about five minutes before I like want to go to the bathroom. So we're going to really... <laughs> Keep it moving, and um, to echoes Carla's invitation. If if we're talking about something that doesn't make sense, please stop and ask. Or if you have a really different perspective on what we're talking about, it's so helpful to have the the different perspectives in the room, so we really can um, go a little deeper into what we're talking about. So just really open invitation. Yeah. And the thing is, um, with these trainings, is we have a diverse group in the room, and so there's many kinds of backgrounds, right? So someone may have been a nurse for 20 years, and another person is a non-clinical person who supervises staff. And so we're trying to help all of you, but sometimes we, you know, it will help us to, to know more about your perspective. Um, some things, you know, we often have heard like, oh, that was too simple for us, and other people say, that was fantastic, we've never learned about that before. So we're, we're trying to uh, get a happy medium. Um, I just also want to say that the work that we do in our experience, um, a lot of it comes uh, not just from our personal and professional uh, experience, but at PCDC we do uh, technical assistance and coaching. We work with organizations who are implementing care coordination programs or care management programs. We um, help them with operations, workflows, process, in addition to this training work that we do. So a lot of the things that we'll be sharing uh, we've seen on the ground, we've seen in, you know, in different locations, rural, urban, um, but you know, if there's anything I've learned about care coordination and care management, it's that it actually is, is specific to your, you know, there's some overarching concepts, but a lot of it is specific to your local situation. What kind of patients you care for, what kind of staffing you have, um, and we're going to talk more about that today. But there's no kind of one exact, you know, best practice way to, to do it. Um, so with that, I think I'll, I'll ask people to just very briefly <coughs> tell me your name, where you 
work, what kinds of patients you care for, and um, what kind of staff you supervise. Meaning, like, do they have licenses? Do they not? You know, but just like 30 seconds. <laughs> How about I start here? Sure. I'm Amy Ducharme. I'm from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont. I'm a registered nurse and a certified case manager, and I manage our clinical programs. So we have a chronic condition management program, case management that are beginning to maternity wellness, utilization management program. Um, I think I got them all. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and we have about 24 clinical staff, so that's um, nurses, social workers. Um, we have one uh, licensed alcohol and drug abuse counselor. Um, and then we have about, I would say, 20 non-clinical staff. So together, yeah, great. And I realized one thing I forgot. Can you just also tell me, everyone, just think about one thing you're hoping to get out of today? So I, I've been a manager for a while in different settings, and I think that um, trying to meet people where they're at in whatever section of care coordination and care management and helping. For us, we manage a commercial population, and it's basically telephonic for the mm -hmm. most part. Okay. And so Good to know. trying to get those skills that you don't see when you have people in front of you, mm -hmm. and just trying to continually learn and help people grow in that scenario. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I'm Jessica Gilman. I'm a registered nurse. Um, and I'm new to the management team at Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm the clinical team lead. Um, so a lot of what I will be doing is coaching staff. Um, and I'm also a Better Beginnings nurse, which is the maternity wellness program. Great. We haven't had the maternity folks here before. Mm -hmm. That's that's <laughs> fantastic. I, I'm the right person for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Coro, obviously. <laughs> I belong to the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont uh, group. I am the manager along with Amy where we do manage all of our um, conditions um, and work with our staff to support these programs out in our communities. Um, I think I'm also a nurse. A. I am new to the, to the um, manager position in the last couple of months. Um, and I think that what I would like to get out of um, today's uh, training would be, you know, just uh, the collaborative leadership both internally and then be able to um, bring that out to our community mm -hmm. as well. So. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. I know you, but don't yeah, you know me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm Stephanie Cartsfield. I work for um, SASH, a support and services at home program, which is um, a housing-based model of care coordination. And um, so, so I'm the operations manager for the entire state, so we're a uh, statewide model that um, brings housing and other partner agencies, mental health, um, home health, agencies on aging, as well as being part of the larger food for health and mental homes and hospitals all together in a care coordination team. Um, that's the quickest I can say it. Um, so we're throughout the whole state, and what I, um, I directly supervise a small team of people who help support um, the staff around the state, and that staff are um, care coordinators who are non-licensed, who are in homes working with people, as well as um, wellness nurses who are RNs. And so we have a great team that supports those folks out in the field, and those care coordinators, um, they both do care coordination out in the state, uh, out around the state in the homes, and they connect with the, me the medical homes with other care providers and things like that. So we really are supporting them, and what does care coordination look like in a complex model and an integrated model when they are the eyes and ears on the ground, they're in the home, they're communicating with those other folks. Great. Um, so that's that's what I do. I kind of oversee the it from a statewide perspective model of fidelity and consistency and helping that spread around the state. Um, and what I hope to get out of today, um, obviously some great tips, but also looking at it, we have a whole room full of people from different organizations who are all supervising care coordinators. How do we all integrate and work together and not overlap them? Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you. Sure. Hi. Hi. I'm Leslie Gundry. I am the Blueprint Project Manager for Franklin and Grand Isle counties, and I co-manage a fleet of about 20 licensed professionals from nursing to drug and alcohol to mental health. 
and I don't have a clinical medical background at all. That's so okay. Legal field. <laughs> okay. So, so I've been learning a lot over the last year. <laughs> um, I'm just here for some new tools because a lot of what I do is trying to get coordination in a cohesive way going in our community. So, okay. Welcome. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, Ona. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm Ona Johnson. I'm a federal primary care. We're working on the pediatric office side of our office. Um, I am the nursing supervisor and the care coordinator. And I'm here basically to just gain more tools. Okay. Welcome. Hi. I'm going to go in the back here first. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jennifer Hunter. I'm a SASH team leader with Cathedral Square. I work with Stephanie. And I am one of those people she's talking about that have their own group. I uh, supervise SASH coordinators that are not necessarily licensed or clinical, though one of my team members is a psychologist and licensed, so very different people drawn to the field. And um, wellness nurses, which are the RNs. And some of their struggles are obviously caseload and how to get all the different things done. And I come from a mental health background, so I'm like, Oh, what if you do it this way? If you do it, you know, and I feel like I need to step back sometime and figure out better how to teach the people to fish rather than <laughs> you know. So <laughs> what I'm looking for is how to manage that. One, make sure you have time for the preventative stuff when all the crises. Is, how do you hold off on some of those and also just stop giving people answers? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's my personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> Great, welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm uh, Pam Harding. I'm the practice manager at Brattleboro Primary Care. Right. We have both the pediatric and adult medicine side. Uh, we have LPNs, MAs, and uh, pediatricians, uh, uh, adult medicine uh, physicians, and um, nurse practitioners, NPAs. Um, I'm uh, here today just to get a better understanding about patient care, uh, patient uh, care coordination, so that I can help my staff, um, and um, also so uh, that we can continue to qualify as a medical home and recognized by NCQA mm -hmm. since the 2015 <coughs> standards really emphasize patient care coordination. Yeah, and 2017 even more. We yeah. just saw them, the new ones are mm -hmm. coming soon. Okay, welcome. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Ron McCall and I am a nurse. And I work for One Care Vermont, and so my territory is Brattleboro and Bennington, and those two areas do care coordination completely differently. Mm -hmm. The one, um, the one area is mostly telephonic, and then the other is you know meeting with people. And so, sorry. So Brad is in person, and Bennington is telephonic. Yes. How did I know that? Yes, okay. It is. <laughs> My sister in law lives in Brattleboro, so and I so it makes it really diff diff completely different to deal with one set of care coordinators yes. and the other. Mm -hmm. And as healthcare is changing, and payment, healthcare payment is changing, with the focus moving from fee for service and uh, numbers to quality and value in healthcare, there's going to be a lot more focus on the care coordination and what is done to prevent chronic disease. So yeah. um, what I'm looking for is um, I think just learning how to bring the, the Bennington group a little closer, even though they don't have time to meet with people um, face to face, but to bring them a little closer to, to where I think the rest of the state is as far as doing care coordination and and helping them adjust to the new focus on the care coordination piece. Great. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Hi. Hi. I'm Lisa Delgado and I work at Clifford Medical Center. I am the care team lead for the community health team. And working with a small team, I have um, four people. And I, one is an MA and the other two are just uh, have di different uh, degrees of education and experience. And I'm here to learn tips and tricks and, you know, master my craft a little bit better because I've been a nurse for a long time. And like she said, it's kind of hard to stop fixing people or, you know, trying to 
lead them, yeah. but, you know, yeah. when they, we want them to learn to self-manage. And... It's like parenting, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's like this progressive, like, oh, okay, you, you can do that. I'll, I'll sit back. How, how did it go when you did that, right? I'll just do it. <laughs> Hi, Hi, I'm Sharon Stearns. I am um, an LICSW and a PF Climber Center um, in Randolph and Chelsea. And I am an adult and substance abuse care coordinator there. So I have a team of um, six or seven, mostly licensed, and a couple of people working toward their license. Um, just looking to soak it all in, and we'll see how we can improve. Great, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Amy Burroughs. I am also with Stash. I'm on the, admin, the statewide admin team, and I support half of the state. Uh, so I don't supervise people directly, but I supervise a lot of people, um, and including supporting their supervisors. And I also have a number of projects where I'm coordinating with state collaborations to um, communicate best in each health service area where they're working on their programming. So, um, so my hope for today is how best to work with staff that um, is sort of responsible for it, but um, don't directly supervise. <coughs> okay. Okay. Welcome. Hi. Hi. My name is Denise Keating, and I'm from uh, the Middlebury Economic Services Office, and I am a reach-up <coughs> case management supervisor there. And one of the things that we are working on across the state is integrating family services so that we are all working together to provide support to families as a whole. Mm -hmm. So the Reach Up program provides financial support as well as case management to folks that are low income. And part of that is to learn to uh, get to know other agencies that are also providing services to uh, the under, uh, underserved folks in Vermont that have many, many barriers, one which is right now substance abuse is very high along with mental health issues. So my purpose is to try and integrate, working on integrating all our services to support the family, not just one part of the family, but how is the family working to be successful as a whole family? So we're a resource. I don't have any medical background, but we also are a resource for folks to get uh, good health care, mental health services. Great, welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm Jennifer Murdoch, and I'm from the Council of Service Madison County. The program that <clears throat> I um, work in provides traumatic brain injury services, um, adult family care services through the Choices for Care program, and predominantly we're a developmental service provider. Um, we provide community-based residential care for many of our consumers. We're, um, the case managers that I supervise are supporting people from young adulthood through their death. Um, these folks all have an intellectual disability and um, many people have a mental illness they have many um, different conditions and resulting um, medical problems that go along with that. <clears throat> uh, we do not, you know, we really take care of our own in a community setting. Um, and so staff, we have a um, part-time registered nurse on staff who delegates special care procedures to our staff um, and our contractors. Um, for people who have those, you know, who have those needs, um, it's a it, it's a lot for our service coordinators to um, manage. You know, it's as if you're caring for you know your caseload of 18 family members around the you know around the clock. These folks can get calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and it's a very stressful job. And I'm hoping to find some tools to help them. A great deal of compassion fatigue. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. They're not licensed. Right. Yeah. Hey, right. okay, welcome. Hi, I'm Sarah Marquez. I'm from the Rutland Hospital Service Area. I'm the Movement Project Manager and the Acting Community Health Team Manager. 
And we do have a local core team that involves some licensed clinical social workers, nurses, respiratory therapists, um, some community health workers, and we partner with many of the folks around the room to provide care coordination. Uh, I would say um, something I would like to get out of today is more conversation discussion of how to manage a very heavy caseload, yeah. a very high intensive needy patient, how to support the staff in doing that, how to help them prioritize. They don't want to give anything up. Um, <laughs> we do a lot of that face-to-face. -face. It includes home visits. Our pediatric staff do do some embedded work, so they're catching the patients as they're coming into the office. But it's very, we are dealing with, um, you know, certainly the, the top media patients and working, you know, collaboratively with multiple partners trying to get everybody on the same page in that kind of crime. Yeah, yeah, welcome. Hi. Good morning, I'm Robin Skiff. I'm in the Chipping County Health Service area. And I'm here today in the context of my role <coughs> as the um, facilitator of the Integrated Communities Care Management Collaborative and um, my role related to the rollout of the Care Navigator um, Care Coordination Software. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the two things I'm really looking for today are related to a couple of things really kind of um, supporting and leading really diverse teams, people who may be licensed, unlicensed, new to care coordination, sort of supporting them and their teams in coming together around developing um, a sense of team and collaboration. We have a, a, we're a large service area with a wide um, variety of organizations and people coming together around this in a really new way. <coughs> ideas around um, you know preventing burnout you know, supporting people that are really really super busy and we've all been through a lot of collaboratives and changes and things yes. are still changing and yes. sort of how to really support people around that okay great all right wouldn't it be great if we had this conversation we have four. one straggling <laughs> oh <laughs> hi hi <laughs> sorry i'm late hi, no worries. Our issues, so. yes no, no worries <laughs> My name is Beth Diederich, and I am an Economic Service Reach-Up Supervisor. Um, I supervise the case management team, and um, we work collaboratively with ECI, which is Vermont Chronic Care Initiative, Howard Center, and MCSS. So I'm just looking for some tools to kind of help with that collaboration a little bit. Great. So I'm going to ask you, um, just before I get started, because I, that was really helpful, but obviously it put us a little behind. So we have an hour and 15 minutes blocked for lunch. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm wondering how people feel, you included, about doing an hour, not an hour 15 for lunch. Mm, that's fine. I have a plane to catch, and we were really committed to getting you out at four and not not running over. So is everyone cool with that? The are, are there options to cut material? Fine. Or do you or lunch. Yeah. an hour for lunch as opposed to an hour 15? Everyone's good? Okay. Not so good. Okay. Yeah? Raise your hands. Uh, who, who's okay with an hour for lunch? Okay, so I think that's what we'll do, just so we don't go over. Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, oh, great. So I'm just going to go through some of our objectives for today, and um, you know, I think that what we have set up is going to is going to make a lot of you happy. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, personal strengths as um, your personal strengths as a leader, and kind of thinking about areas where you want to grow. Um, we're going to have you thinking about the, both the strengths and challenges of the actual program that you work in and, and supervise and sort of visioning about kind of where you want that to go and some tools for how to do that. Um, we're going to, um, Julie's going to do some really interesting work on motivational interviewing and using that as a tool, not just with patients, but actually with your staff. Um, and we're going to talk about burnout, we're going to do some exercises around burnout, um, and then uh, we're going to do some more work on motivational interviewing um, and uh, how that relates to uh, supervision. 